Hey guys, today is Monday, August 17th. The time is just after 2 p.m. and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. I'm here in the city's South Riverdale area, which lies just to the east of downtown. There's a look at the Broadview Hotel. And the plan for this walk is to turn left here onto Queen Street East. And I'll head on over to the Leslieville neighborhood. And then I'll walk through Leslieville along Queen Street to where it ends at Coxwell Avenue. Leslieville itself starts just at the railroad tracks, which are a few blocks to the east from here. And it's bound by those railway tracks to the west and to the north. And to the south, it's bound by Lakeshore Boulevard and to the east at Coxwell. There's a look at the Opera House, a local concert venue here. That opened back in 1909, I want to say. It's been home to a number of local Toronto acts, including bands such as the Tragically Hip and the Bare Naked Ladies. Well, the hip are from Kingston, but they're perhaps best known in this part of Ontario. That's the 501 streetcar, which runs through Leslieville. And if you continue on heading east, you'll end up in the Beaches neighborhood. And at the end of the Beaches, the streetcar will terminate. It's not too hard to get to this neighborhood. You could take the streetcar east from Queen Station, which is what I did if you're taking the subway, or you could get off at a number of stops at Line 2 and then take a relatively quick bus south, which will take you down to Queen Street. Or at Broadview Avenue, you could take a, a streetcar. This walk was requested by one of the patrons who supports this channel, so thanks to Maddie for requesting this walk. There's a look west down Queen Street. I'm planning to come back here in the evening at, or at night sometime and do a walk around this area, as well as explore some of the areas to the south and to the north of here. And these are the train tracks where Leslieville would formally begin. These tracks run to the northeast.
And while this is the most popular part of Leslieville I'm walking through, there are some other notable neighborhoods within Leslieville, such as Little India. which is to the northeast of here. Dundas and Gerard would be the other two main east to west uh, streets that run through Leslieville. Maybe I'll cross and take a look at this park over on the other side. Traffic's pretty light. It is a weekday afternoon, so it's an interesting time for me to be out recording a walk. And this is Jimmy Simpson Park. Originally, Leslieville was just a village back in the 1850s. And it started life as primarily an industrial part of town. I think there were metalworks and tanneries, mostly located to the south of here along Eastern Avenue. So it was a bit of a blue collar crowd that lived here back in the day. But since sometime in the early 2000s, it's really started to gentrify. I think the last of the factories and industry had closed and started turning into lofts and condos. There's certainly a lot of conversions in this area. So some of the smoggy and lower quality air in the city was replaced by fresh air and new housing developments, so that certainly worked to this neighborhood's favor. And it's become one of the top neighborhoods in the city. Of course, these sidewalk patios are unique to this summer in the city. That place has some very good Thai food. I've been fortunate enough to have eaten there a few times. And this looks like an example of a loft conversion across the street. It's soon to be home of a A&W, which is excellent. taking a brief detour just up ahead down one of the residential streets in this neighborhood to check out a particularly interesting house and then I'll come back down and rejoin Queen Street So this area is quite different from the part of Queen Street East that runs through downtown.
the downtown portion certainly feels a lot more depressed. I don't really know a better word for it than that. But it hasn't quite started to gentrify anywhere near on this scale. There's an old timey style general store and kitchen, the Leslieville Pumps. Looks like that's still a functioning gas station too. You don't see too many in that style anymore, especially not in the city. And this is Carla Avenue, or Carla Avenue, which has a number of those loft conversions on it, just to the north of here. You could take this south down to Lakeshore, or north up into Greektown on the Danforth. There seems to be a fair number of retail opportunities available on Queen Street. I'm not sure if the coronavirus pandemic has contributed much to that, although I'm sure it certainly hasn't helped. There's the East Side Social. I think there's a lot of snack and finger food type treats available there, along with the bar, of course. Much like the Beaches neighborhood up ahead, it certainly has a bit of a smaller town feel to it. And while it has gentrified, there's certainly a number of mom and pa type stores. Not sure I'd feel comfortable buying a bicycle from a pawn shop. Given that bikes are in quite high demand right now, you could probably sell it privately for far more than a pawn shop would give you for it. And this is Pape Avenue. So like I said earlier, a lot of these streets connect to north up to the Danforth. And there is Billy's Burgers and Sandwiches. I'm wondering if that used to be Dangerous Dan's. It was a burger restaurant famous for clogging the arteries of its customers. It seems to be a familiar spot. I can't quite put my finger on it. That's something I'll probably look up when I get back. It 
This development here on the left certainly doesn't seem to fit the neighborhood. Jack Layton Senior's house here. So it's a seniors complex. Still, I'd like to see major streets like this be a little bit more sensitive to the surrounding neighborhood in terms of the developments. I have no problem building upwards, but you really should have retail facing the street. Seems like a missed opportunity. Sweat and soda. I thought it said sweet and soda at first. It's kind of an interesting name. To the south of here is the Ash Bridges Bay Sewage Treatment Plant or Wastewater Treatment Plant. So it's not uncommon to get a waft of something unpleasant every now and then. There's a great bar, or microbrewery, I guess you could call it, to the south of here, called the Roar Sarch. Where I have been greeted by an unpleasant odor on several occasions there. But if you're wondering, right now it smells pretty good. Nothing to be concerned about. And this is Burt Mount. It's always good to check out the residential streets in any neighborhood, but this one in particular has something interesting waiting for us, or at least it used to. We'll see if it's still there. And it should be just up ahead on the right. Someone bought themselves a very nice toy. I think it's at house number 35. These are fairly standard semi-detached dwellings. They're probably well over 50 years old looking at them. Oh, these ones for sure. Look how many times the exterior has been reshingled recently alone. And a lot of these older homes do have problems with the plumbing at some point. You basically have to dig through the basement and replace all your pipes when they start to crack. That can be a very expensive repair, but it's kind of necessary. And here we go. That was the Leslieville Dollhouse, or Crazy Dollhouse, as it's sometimes referred to as. The lady who lives there has been putting those dolls on display for over the last few decades. 
you'd have to wonder if they're ever cleaned off or if they're all bacteria and mold traps. Hopefully they're cleaned regularly. The elements here certainly aren't too kind in the winter. He knows he's being watched. And we're heading back to Queen Street. It was supposed to rain later on today, so I do have my umbrella with me. Prepared to bust that out. I think this is one of the new Corvettes. I'm sure the locals on the street are used to gawkers taking a little detour, such as I just did. And so we should be coming up on Jones Avenue. Should be the next major street. A lot of the residential streets in this area look like that one we just looked down or the one we just walked down. A lot of really older single family and semi-detached houses. There's not much in the way of high-rise development in this area. This here is the Leslie Grove Park. And this is Jones Avenue right here. Last year I did a walk down the street. I think I refer to it as the street stuck in time. Trying to get a clean look at this artwork over here. When I record these videos, I'm always on the lookout for a thumbnail opportunity. I usually just grab a screenshot so maybe that'll be it, maybe it won't. And then just across the street here is Radical Road Brewing. It's one of the local craft breweries in the area. I've been there. I have, I'd say it was quite good. I've only been there a few times. And this place is excellent. Descendant Detroit or Detroit style pizza. Highly recommend this place. I don't know too many of the restaurants in this area. And there's another one just to the east of here called Queen Margarita Pizza, which is one of the best pizza joints in Toronto probably.
And that's coming from a guy who had dominoes last night, as I often do. It's a little gray and gloomy today, so I hope that uh, doesn't look too dark on the video. And just up here is Leslie Street, which you can take down to Lakeshore Boulevard. And here's another, oh, this one's full serve. We seem to be in the gas station district. Look at that auto repair garage. This place could be straight out of small town Ontario and you would never know. Here's the Queen's Head. I've been here after softball a number of times. And I've always wanted to try the friendly tie, I just haven't got around to it mainly because I don't live in this area. And there is the DukeLive.com. It's a concert hall that features a lot of very local Toronto rock acts. It's more of a bar slash music venue. I think it opened back in the 1800s, I want to say 1870. And it was originally known as the Morin House Tavern and has since changed names a few times. It's got to be one of the oldest bars in the city. There's the, the Black Bull on Queen Street West. And the Wheat Chief, which is the oldest at Bathurst and King. But that's got to be right up there with them. I finished the whole, I finished the whole thing. China Lily, Lee's Food Products. I'm sure there's an interesting story to that place. Maybe it'll be a bit better lighting-wise if I cross the street. So that, the DukeLive.com I'm quite sure has been designated a heritage building by the city of Toronto. And there's another one coming up, which is part of the old Ashbridge estate. That guy just popped out of nowhere. And there's a AAA. I don't know if this one even open anymore. There's one on Adelaide. And then there's another one I just walked by. And another walk. I think there's three of those in Toronto. The one on Adelaide specializes in bourbon. Maggie's Floral Cafe.
and one of the city's many recreational cannabis stores that have popped up recently, Tokyo Smokes. One of the big chains, another one would be the Honey Pot. So if you need CBD oil or I guess just regular marijuana, that would be the place to go. Looks like there's some construction here, so I'm going to cross back. Leslieville kind of thins out around this part, all the way up to the beaches. But I'll continue on to Coxwell where it ends, and then if you were to turn north on Coxwell, you can take that up to Girard. And you'll be in the Little India, or the Gerard India Bazaar neighborhood. Last year I did a walk through Leslieville. I went, started at the east at Coxwell and I headed west to Broadview, I think. And that was on a weekend afternoon, but it didn't really seem to be any more busy than this. And that was pre-pandemic, of course. And this is Greenwood Avenue. You can take that north to Danforth as well, in the Greektown, where there will be a uh, Line 2 subway station waiting for you. And I may have walked past the Queen Margarita. Oops. Death in Venice Gelato. I knew it was down in this part. It's been about four or five years since I last went. Just up here on the right is the TTC Russell Streetcar House. That's where they store a lot of the Queen Streetcars when they're out of service. They used to do a lot of maintenance and repairs there of the old streetcars, but I think the uh, cost to upgrade this facility to accommodate them was too high. I'm trying to walk across the street and get a better look at it. So they ended up building a very expensive new streetcar house, streetcar house just to the southwest of here, off of Leslie, I believe. It might even be called the Leslie Car House. And that's where they service and maintain the bulk of the new style streetcars, as the old ones have since been retired. They might still do some basic maintenance here. They probably do. But there were talks of upgrading this particular facility and not building the new one.
it's probably a fairly pricey chunk of land the city is sitting on. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this eventually. Oh, look, there's one of the vintage streetcars in there. There's only a few of those left. Not sure if you can see that. But if this area is redundant, I wouldn't be surprised to see it sold off. And this is the Arthur Estate we're approaching. Settled by, or the Ashbridge Estate. I don't know why I said Arthur. And I think this building was built, or this house, sometime around 1840. And they later added the second floor. And they settled in Canada from Pennsylvania in the late 1700s. If I could read French, I could probably confirm some of that for you. But let's take a look at the other side. So they started clearing the land in 1794, and they were granted 600 acres of property. Let's mosey on in here for a second. So I want to say this isn't the original home on the property. This one was built in the mid 1800s sometime. And that second floor you see up top was later added on. This overcast sky is playing havoc with the ISO on my camera. So this is all that's left of what used to be a huge parcel of land. And a number of the parks and even a street and the treatment plant are named after the Ashbridges and some of their descendants. Certainly a beautiful looking property. It looks like there's a somewhat extensive park area. It's one of those places I've always kind of walked by but never paid much mind to. The Leslieville Flea. Don't know what that is. So like I said, this part of Leslieville really seems to thin out. There's a acupuncture clinic. Chicken Joy, I love it, first bite, country fried chicken. If it weren't for the streetcar straight ahead, you would never guess you're in such a big city right now. Queen to Long Branch, so that streetcar is going all the way to the west end of Toronto. Long Branch is where it'll turn around, right at the border of the neighboring suburb of Mississauga. Well, I guess it's not really a suburb anymore. I believe more people commute to Mississauga than from Mississauga, which is sort of how you define what a suburb is. Here's some very nice old properties, a little bit Cabbage Town-esque. Probably from the same era. And there is Jonathan Ashbridge Park. 
I think he might have been might have been one of the children of the Ashbridges, but I'm just speculating at this point. And just off to the east to the south from here are where the Toronto beaches begin. And just past Coxwell where I'll finish this walk it used to be the Greenwood racetrack, which at the time when it was operating was the most urban horse racetrack in North America. It was a harness track. But before that, I think there was a racetrack here called Woodbine, which is located a bit more to the south. And they've since opened up Woodbine racetrack around the airport. And when they closed Greenwood, which was a harness track in Oakwood, or Woodbine was a thoroughbred track. They moved the harness operations to Woodbine. And they've opened up a lot of slot machines there as well. Here goes an orange helicopter. Usually those are medical helicopters. I don't know the correct term for that. Ashdale Pharmacy. I wonder if this area is also known as Ashdale. Often in Toronto, if you're wondering where you are, you can just look at the sign and right on top where it says Craven, it might say the neighborhood of the immediate area you're in, but here it doesn't say anything. Wonderland Cannabis. Those stores are just popping up everywhere. And the Premier of Ontario made a good point recently. If you can smoke some of that stuff out in public, why can't you have a beer at a park? And it turns out that's actually a city of Toronto law and not a provincial law. This looks like a fairly high-end bicycle shop. And just as I get to Coxwell, it's starting to rain. So pretty good timing. I was kind of hoping for more of a dramatic rainstorm so I could film something else for this channel, but this will do. I was also planning on filming a walk just for the Patreon users that headed up Coxwell to Little India. Maybe I'll still do that. It will be a game time decision when I get to Coxwell. But here is the intersection of Queen and Coxwell and straight ahead on the right is where Greenwood racetrack would have been and it's really starting to rain now so hopefully I can grab some cover around the corner maybe not so I'm just gonna shut the camera down now thanks for watching guys don't forget to share your thoughts and comments in the comments down below there are links to patreon if you wish to support this channel and Instagram and I will continue to do live streams, so keep an eye out for those. I don't have any set schedule in mind. I'm still working out some of the technical hurdles. And if you were heading to the beaches, you could just head south here, and this will take you down to Woodbine Beach, pretty much. All right, thanks for watching, and stay safe.